leading Brexiteer and indeed a former Brexit secretary who walked out of Theresa May's cabinet last year. And he's announcing this morning that he wants to be our next prime minister. He's with me now. I say that. Is it true? Yes, I'll be putting myself forward because I believe I'm the candidate that can bring the optimism and the change that this country needs to get us moving forward. I fight for a fairer deal in Brussels uh, with negotiation to change the backstop arrangements. And if not, I would be clear we would leave on WTO terms in October. But mainly because I want to get on and talk about all those other things. I'll be fighting for a fairer deal for workers, many of whom haven't had a pay rise in many years, and above all, a fairer society where the kid from the humble home, the rough background or the disadvantaged community gets their shot to be the, make the best of their potential in life. So that's the vision I'm putting forward. And I think it's a vision that can take Britain forward and beat Jeremy Corbyn. But nothing happens until you have sorted out Brexit and the backstop. Now, you say that you can get a better deal on the backstop. Can I put it to you that you can't, that there is no evidence that you or anybody else can? Theresa May fought and fought and fought for it. What was she doing that was wrong? Well, look, first of all, I think there is clearly a reasonable ask that we can make, one that had the approval of the House of Commons around the so-called Brady Amendment, in particular making sure we've got an exit from the backstop. And I think we need to go out and be absolutely resolute in a way we weren't last time. And I've got the experience, not only as a conviction Brexiteer, as a lawyer, uh, having worked six years in the Foreign Office, I'm used to these negotiations, I've seen it up firsthand, and I think that it is achievable. But of course you're right, it will need some goodwill on the other side too. And they don't like you very much, do they? Well, that probably tells you that I was doing my job in terms of pressing them hard yeah. and making sure that Britain's interests were resolutely defended. Now, you say that you can get a better deal, that they can move on the backstop. The Dutch Prime Minister, Mark Rutte, who is a real friend of Britain in, in relative terms in that, says, this week, said on Friday, the withdrawal agreement, which includes the backstop, is not up for renegotiation. The Irish Taoiseach, Leo Varadkar, says, whatever happens, we are going to hold our nerve again and again and again. They say, we're not moving. And people like you on this side of the channel say, oh, they will in the end. And they don't. I, what's going to be different? Well, look, one of the reasons that they, I mean, you'd expect them to say all this right in the middle of a leader, as a leadership contest kicks off. But one of the reasons is that we weren't resolute enough and we took no deal off the table. So I don't want a WTO Brexit, but I think unless you're willing to keep our promises as politicians, and we, I think, are going to see what happens if you don't in the European election results later, if we don't and we're not willing to say that, I think we put ourselves in a much weaker position in terms of getting a deal. Because if you're not willing to walk away from the negotiation, it doesn't focus the mind of the other side. But you've been in these negotiations yourself, and yeah. you've asked for these things yourself in the past, and you haven't got them. What's going to be really different because you're Prime Minister? Well, first of all, as I said, we'd be willing to walk away from the negotiations if we don't get the very finite, targeted, reasonable change. Secondly, um, I think my experience was of being undermined by some others in government, so we'd need to have a very well-organised Number 10 operation and a united cabinet. And I think if you do that and you can be really credible in Brussels that actually we mean business, we want a good deal, we want to okay. these limited changes, but we're willing to walk away otherwise. I think that will focus minds in a way that wasn't done before. And do you think that Theresa May was simply not tough enough, therefore? I don't want to get into the personal yeah, side but that's of it. the implication of what you're saying. I don't think, um, I actually don't think that at the leadership level, which includes the Prime Minister, but also includes the Cabinet, cabinet we weren't resolute enough around the line that we'd agreed and we promised. This comes back to the binary promise we made we would leave on the 29th of March with a deal, and I'm very keen to get a deal, but if not, if the EU wouldn't move, wouldn't uh, extend and reciprocate with the goodwill and the flexibility we'd show, then yes, on WTO terms. Well, let's come back to what may or may not happen. Um, you say that you know you were, you were worried about uh, aspects of the deal. You voted for the withdrawal agreement, and for a lot of people who are proper Brexiteers, that was betrayal. You said you wouldn't vote for it, and then you did. It's not quite true, is it, Andrew? If you look and read my speech, what I said was I voted and the specific third vote we had was to avoid the European elections and any further extension. And it was very clear that if we were going to have a vote on the deal under so-called Section 13, I can bore you with all the detail, it would have to come back to the House of Commons. So I voted only to avoid an extension, which I think was a bad idea. And I think I've been proved right about that. Do you still think that Theresa May's withdrawal agreement was worse than staying in? I didn't say that. What I said was that the backstop, in some respects, because we bound by a suite of laws from uh, oh. customs, hold on, from customs rules, the tax policy and social policy, without a say over it, in that respect, okay. it, it, it was Let weaker me. in terms of taking back... Let me read control. you what you said in the Today programme in November. 
if you just presented me with this deal or EU membership, yes, I would think this is even worse than that, staying in the EU. We'd effectively be bound by the same rules without a voice or control over them. That's what you said, worse than staying in. But then you voted for it. Yes, in re- so let's be clear and honest with your viewers about this. In relation to the backstop, which is the, the suite of laws we'd be bound by, we wouldn't have any say over those and we wouldn't be able to exit from that. No democratic country in history has agreed to be bound by that. And I voted against an extension, but I made very clear, in, as my speech in the House of Commons shows, that because we would have another Section 13 vote, mm-hmm. that I would reserve my position. All along, this I is, said... OK, this is at least complicated stuff. The is. Brexit party might have a fantastic night tonight. They might win. They might push the Conservative Party way down the running order. And that is partly because they feel that people like you folded. I don't think anyone that looks at uh, what I did can say that. I resigned on principle uh, because I tried very hard to fight for the deal that I'm still fighting for now. And when my advice wasn't taken, either by the Prime Minister or indeed by the Cabinet, I did the honourable thing and said, OK, I can't carry this deal over the line. But it also showed me, and I'm a details uh, guy, I'm a lawyer and spent six years in the Foreign Office, it's also showed me actually the path that we can navigate to get a deal. But we'll only be able to do that if we're serious about walking away in the worst eventuality. Well, let's talk about that, because as Prime Minister, you would have one power absolutely in your hands. At the end of October, you would be able to ask for an extension or decide you are definitely not going to ask for an extension. Can I ask you, as Prime Minister, would you certainly not ask for a further extension in October? There's no case for a further extension. I think we've got to bring some finality to this. And can you promise people watching now, I will not ask for an extension then? I will not ask for an extension. Of course, if Parliament legislates, uh, then we will be in a difficult position. But as the Institute for Government has set out today, it's very difficult for Parliament now to legislate against uh, no deal or in favour of a further extension unless the executive, unless a resolute Prime Minister is willing to acquiesce in that. And I would not. So you are really one of the candidates which would take Britain towards a no deal? No, I'm, I would Well, you, I would be the if, candidate that would put us in the deal. best position because you need to be able to walk away to get the deal which could pass through Parliament. So a lot of people in the Conservative Party think that to take Britain towards no deal is hijacking the result of the referendum campaign in 2016. Uh, Philip Hammond, the Chancellor, who will be on later on, said the 2016 Leave campaign was clear that we would leave with a deal. So to advocate no deal is to hijack the result of the referendum. There is no mandate for a no deal exit. And that is true, isn't it? No, it's not. And of course, the one thing we said we'd do during the referendum, hold on, let me answer the question, is leave the EU. And then as Conservatives, whether you're on the Remain or the Leave side, all of our manifestos said we'd come out of the EU, come out of the Customs Union, and that no deal was better than a bad deal. I think we should keep our promises. Well, let's, let's remind ourselves what you said during the referendum campaign. Look at the options being put out there. Swiss, Norwegian, Turkish. I think because Britain's economy is bigger than all of those economies combined, and because the French car manuf- uh, French farmers, German car manufacturers, sell a 68, 68 billion pounds more each year than we sell them, we're very well placed, and mutual self-interest suggests we'd cut a very good deal. We'd cut a very good deal, but that's not where we are now, is it? No, and that's because I'm afraid that the original vision of Brexit that the Prime Minister set out in the Lancaster House speech and then in our manifesto wasn't followed. But I want to deal. Why not? Why do you think it wasn't followed? There's all sorts of, I don't want to get personal about this, but I basically don't think we were resolute enough in sticking to the strategy and the vision of a Brexit, which maintains our cooperation, our trade links with the EU, but doesn't then grasp the opportunities of Brexit. And actually it's become rather a miserly, dour risk management exercise, rather than grasping opportunities that take back control of our laws, our borders and our money, and also to have this the global advantages and opportunities that free trade brings. You know that a lot of your colleagues very strongly disagree with that. They've read Mark Sedwell, the Cabinet Secretary, they've looked at the Treasury, they've listened to the big bosses of some of the car companies and other companies in this country, and they think no deal will destroy a lot of British jobs very, very quickly, and they are frankly terrified of the prospect. And there are lots of Conservatives who would vote to stop that happening in Parliament. Would you simply ignore a parliamentary vote on that? Well, as leader. Uh, you can't ignore law, and as is set out in law at the moment, we leave at the end of October unless the law changes, and that's what we should follow. But bear in mind also, every Conservative, whether the ones you cited or otherwise... But what about Parliament pardon? asserting its view? Parliamentary sovereignty, that's what we're supposed to be well, fighting for. And parliamentary sovereignty is expressed through the law, and the law says we leave at the end of October. But just to come back to your point, look, on WTO Brexit, 
it has to be credible if we're going to be able to get the EU to move towards the deal we want. We've had an extra six months to prepare for this. We've got two side I've deals. Done nothing. No, no. Let me. We've we've got two side deals or sets of arrangements with the EU to facilitate the free flow of lorries either way between France and the UK, aviation as well, and we've got thirty nine billion pounds worth to put the rocket boosters up the economy to support business to what I agree would be a, a, a transition. Any change is. Okay, but the, okay. the can, can I just ask you very, sure. very straight? You, you mentioned the £39 billion. Pounds. Is your view that if we leave without a deal in October, then we keep all of that money and we can spend it, as it were, to, to mitigate any financial shock of, of the no-deal exit? I think long term we want to deal with the EU and I think we will end up, over the long term, putting our relationship on a positive footing. But if we leave the EU on WTO terms, I think probably, under our strict legal obligations, obligations, a fraction of that will be due. I'd be very happy to arbitrate that at some point uh, over a period of years. But you would get at least, I would say, uh, 25 of that billion, which would you, you would have to support businesses through what would inevitably be a transition. And that's why I think we're in a better position now to do this six months on from March. Some people might be watching this and thinking, but hold on a second, Dominic Rob, you've blamed all sorts of other people for what's happened, Brussels, your colleagues, the cabinet, officials and so forth. You were Brexit Secretary during this process. If you were so good, you'd have got us a deal. And, uh, you know, to be honest with you, I think if you look at my judgment call on this issue from the backstop, the exit from the backstop, if my advice had been followed, I think we'd have been in a very good position to do so. Okay. Swirling around this studio, out there, there is the prospect of a romping performance by the Brexit Party under Nigel Farage. Yeah. You've seen how well he's done up and down the country in terms of big meetings. Yes. Do you think you've got something to learn from Nigel Farage, a very crisp, simple, straightforward message, which is having resonance with a lot of Tories out there? Yeah, we, we Conservatives should keep our promises, and all politicians across the spectrum should keep their promises. And we haven't, because the one thing people knew was that we said we'd leave on the 29th of March, So we okay. So, so, so given that, could you do business with him? Could you come to some kind of agreement with him? He wants to be part of the negotiating team. Could you imagine walking into Brussels shoulder to shoulder with Nigel Farage? Look, I always listen to all sides of this debate, from the uh, so Nigel you, Farage so to you others. Would. I mean, hold on. But, but no, I would lead a Conservative team, uniting all the different aspects of the Conservative Party around a cabinet table and take a disciplined approach. Look, I want Any to, electoral pact with Nigel Farage and the Brexit Party going forward? I have no plans for that, and that's not what I'd be aiming for. Um, no plans, not what you're aiming for, is not no, saying I don't want no to, on no, principle, I don't, Well, it? look, I'm not going to answer hypothetical questions. It's irresponsible to do so. But I, my aim is not to cosy up to other parties. My aim is to keep Conservative promises, present an optimistic, aspirational vision for the future, and then go and beat Jeremy Corbyn. If you become Conservative leader, when's the next general election? Well, I think uh, we're, we're scheduled for 2022, and I think it's very important that we get Brexit delivered before we go back to the polls. And I think, and, OK, any new Tory leader coming in is going to have the same problems that Theresa May's had of virtually no majority. Mm. And as a strong Brexiteer, you're going to have, as it were, Remainers inside the Conservative Party, people who are against No Deal as well, against you. How do you stop the Conservative Party falling apart in Parliament and an early general election being provoked by Jeremy Corbyn? Well, you mentioned the European elections and at least the success that the Brexit Party has. I think it's going to be a stark reminder to all Conservatives, we're one family, we bicker and squabble, but we need to come together, that we need to keep our promises. And for those of us, and I think Leavers, Remainers, all want to get on to talk about the other stuff that I talked about, a fairer deal for workers, the Opportunity Society, we're not going to do any of that. Well, let's unless, come on to that. Unless we get Brexit delivered, it will haunt us. Let's get this done responsibly in the right way. I want a deal if we can get one. Okay. But then let's move on and take Britain forward. Let's